Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. In the ancient ruins dating back to thousands of years ago, archaeologists discovered high-tech materials, like what's used in electromagnetic devices today. The interesting thing is that they are not at all like the materials used by our ancient ancestors. Do you believe this is possible? So buried inside the pyramid-shaped buildings, where did these materials come from? Who built so many of these pyramid-type structures? And could it be that the ancient civilizations were more advanced than our modern age? Well, today we're going to talk about the advanced ancient technology discovered in Teotihuacan, also known as the City of the Gods. In October of 2003, heavy rain had been falling on Mexico City for days until finally the sky cleared up. Word spread that 40 kilometers northeast of Mexico City, a one meter deep sinkhole appeared in front of an ancient building. This small sinkhole attracted the attention of archaeologists specialized in ancient American civilizations. They couldn't resist the urge to study the newly formed sinkhole, so they traveled to Mexico to examine the site. Teotihuacan is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Really, it's not so much a city as it is a huge ancient archaeological site. Covering an area of about 20 square kilometers, the city is filled with more than 200 pyramid-shaped buildings, large and small. The main road down the center of the city is called the Avenue of the Dead, and it runs north and south. The Spanish who came to the city in the 16th century gave the road this misleading name. So the story goes that when the Spanish saw so many pyramids, they thought that this city was a graveyard for burying the dead. So the main road was given its name, the Avenue of the Dead. The entire city has three huge pyramids, Pyramid of the Moon, Pyramid of the Sun, the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. Now, this sinkhole appeared in front of the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. So why did the archaeologists spare no time to travel to the sinkhole to examine it? Well, because Teotihuacan is full of mysteries. First of all, no one can say when these pyramids were actually built. Radiocarbon dating found that the structure of the building dates back to 10,000 years ago. However, the famous Mayan civilization in South America only emerged about 5,000 years ago during the Classical period. That's to say, this city is likely to be more ancient than the Mayan civilization, and certainly not built by the Mayans. Archaeologists also believe that Teotihuacan was part of a large urban complex that stretched hundreds of kilometers from northern Mexico to Central America. Even just from its own vast coverage of 20 square kilometers, Teotihuacan is the largest city in the Americas before the arrivals of the Europeans. It seems that the inhabitants of such a prosperous city suddenly disappeared overnight. They were nowhere to be found in any written records. On site, the archaeologists can't even find any hieroglyphs for hints of who had created this huge and complex archaeological art. It's left many scratching their heads. Now, initially, the archaeological community speculated that the indigenous Aztecs of Mexico had built Teotihuacan. This is on the grounds that when the Europeans arrived in the Americas, they found the Aztecs showing the highest architectural achievements among the natives. But this speculation was soon dismissed because the timeline was too far off. The Aztec civilization peaked in the 15th century AD, while even the most recent Teotihuacan's buildings were built in the 1st century BC. The foundation of the city was built far before the Mayan civilization, and the Mayans came before the Aztec people. The archaeologists believed that the Aztecs settled there later and found this deserted city. But the name Teotihuacan was indeed given by the Aztecs, meaning the city of the gods. The archaeologists hoped that the sinkhole that appeared in 2003 would be a new clue, leading them to the answer of who had built Teotihuacan. A joint archaeological team from Mexico and the University of Arizona was formed to excavate the sinkhole. They initially assessed that the sinkhole might be a man-made tunnel. Sure enough, after a period of excavation, they found a tunnel leading from the outside of the temple all the way to underneath the center of the temple. Parts of the tunnel were blocked up, so the excavation went slowly. But just when the work was halfway through, five rooms were discovered that actually contained a large number of jade statues, as well as pottery and object used for rituals. The archaeological team was so excited that they speculated this might be a place of worship for the ancient civilization, or possibly the tomb of a king from a past dynasty. So the team continued digging. It didn't take long for them to find something special. They found yellow spherical objects. After cleaning them up, they found that they were metal balls, both large and small, ranging from 2.5 centimeters to 12 centimeters in diameter. 
But the strange thing was that these metal balls were filled. Its shell was made of pyrite and some other unknown substances. The interior was made of clay. These strange balls did not look like ritual objects, so what were they used for? It was pretty strange and archaeologists scratched their heads without knowing the answer, so they kept digging. In 2015, 12 years after the discovery of the sinkhole, an even more surprising scene appeared before the archaeologists. It wasn't a tomb nor any ritual objects, but instead they found a large pool of liquid mercury. It was something that nobody could have anticipated. There's only one ancient site in the world where large amounts of liquid mercury have been found before. And this is in China, inside the tomb of Qin Shi Huang. This was the first emperor of China more than 2,000 years ago. Now, according to historical records, mercury was used inside the tomb for creating artificial mountains and rivers, but also probably for the embalming of corpses. The highly toxic effect of mercury vapor also played a role in theft prevention. There is no tomb found inside Teotihuacan, so the purpose of mercury there seems to be completely different from the tomb of Qin Shi Huang in China. However, the fact that such a large facility was built to preserve mercury indicates that this resource was so important to the local population that it was stored directly beneath the temple. In all ancient civilizations, only the most important things were kept in temples. But no evidence has been found to indicate that mercury had anything to do with rituals. Now, the archaeologists were even more confused. They didn't know how to explain the discoveries in the sinkhole. Let's look at this from a different perspective. The reason why mercury had very limited use in ancient societies was often because people were ignorant of its electromagnetic properties. This was a blind spot in their knowledge. Mercury became commonly used in modern life for thermometers, we all know this, but it's also widely used for its electromagnetic properties. For example, magnetic levitation or maglev trains use liquid helium to cool mercury so that the mercury enters a superconducting state to produce the levitation effect. In the early 20th century, scientists first discovered that mercury could be used as a superconductor. Superconductors are super fascinating. They have zero resistance at a certain low temperature. An electric current through a loop of superconducting wire can persist indefinitely with no power source. Under the influence of a magnetic field, the superconductor can levitate, and with a gentle push, it can move on seemingly forever. Then this is very much like an anti-gravity effect. Why do superconductors have this ability? Well, it's because under the influence of a magnetic field, the superconductor generates a toroidal current. The magnetic field generated by the current creates a repulsive force with the external magnetic field so that it floats. This is the standard behavior of all superconductors, and the levitating train follows the same principle. James Lincoln, a physicist in California, demonstrated this levitation through experiment. He put liquid mercury into a device that generates an electromagnetic field. Now, it didn't take long to see this tiny drop of liquid flying freely inside. So theoretically, in this environment, liquid mercury can hold up a vehicle and become an anti-gravity source of flight power. This sounds pretty exciting, but two conditions have to be met. First, a really low temperature must be maintained. For example, the maglev trains use liquid helium to maintain the extremely low temperature, which does require the additional raw materials of helium. Secondly, an external magnetic field needs to be maintained and generated. So if these two conditions were met, liquid mercury can fly as far as it wants inside this magnetic field, and for as long as it wants to. If this model is enlarged, then the superconductor can be used to power tools and devices for humans. Unlike fuel that will be burned and consumed, mercury won't be consumed while being used as a superconductor. It really opens up an unprecedented possibility for interstellar navigation. Currently, there are two bottlenecks in human space technology, which are speed and power. Space travel is often measured in light years, but if we use conventional fuel sources, any spacecraft is limited in how much fuel it can carry. Maybe the discovery of the superconductivity of Mercury can help mankind cross into the era of interstellar travel. This idea is certainly exciting, but it is, after all, based on the limited knowledge of modern science. As for this large pool of Mercury in Teotihuacan, was it used as a superconductor? Let's see what else was discovered. Another special feature of Teotihuacan is the mica sheets on the walls of several rooms. 
In the early 20th century, archaeologist Leopoldo Beatrice also found large mica sheets in between the upper levels of the Pyramid of the Sun. However, these places are closed to visitors today and cannot be seen by the average tourist. So what exactly is mica and what is its purpose? It's any group of hydrous potassium and aluminum silicate minerals, often in the form of layers. The color of mica is different depending on its different material components. Now, it wasn't until the 20th century that mica was discovered to be an ideal insulator that blocks electrical currents and insulates against temperatures of up to 1000 degrees Celsius. Mica is also waterproof and acid and alkali resistant. Mika is used in modern construction, firefighting, electronics, even the space and nuclear industries. But thousands of years ago, why was it necessary to build insulated mica chambers that were resistant to high temperatures? This question is left unanswered in the archaeological community because mica chambers seem impractical and useless for back then. The word pyrite comes from the Greek roots lithos and pyre. These two words together mean stones that can light fire. Indeed, pyrite has long been used to start fires. It was only in the 20th century that pyrite started to be used as a chemical catalyst. In recent years, however, another use of pyrite has been discovered. Pyrite can be used to make high-end magnetic data storage devices and solar panels. Okay, let's summarize this and try and make sense of it. The pyrite metal balls plus a huge pool of liquid mercury plus insulated and heat resistant mica rooms, the strange combination of these elements could really mean much more. Why? Well, because they are all modern high tech materials used in electromagnetic equipment, which is completely unlike how we usually think of the ancient peoples. So ancient civilizations expert David Childress believed that the pyramid complex in Teotihuacan could have been a complete set of electromagnetic equipment, kind of like a power plant. But some people are thinking bigger. Another ancient civilizations expert, David Wilcock, I'm sure you've heard of his name, observed that the location of Teotihuacan is not far from the equator. Now get this, it's also ideal to build modern rocket launch bases near the equator. At the equator, there's greater linear velocity from the Earth's rotation. This energy can be used to thrust the rocket and save fuel. For example, launching a satellite from the Guiana Space Center will save 15% of the fuel compared to launching the same satellite from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. David Wilcox speculated that Teotihuacan may be a space base of an ancient era. This base generates a strong enough electromagnetic field to launch an interstellar spacecraft with Mercury in a superconductor state as its first propulsion for takeoff. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. He believes that space is an ideal low temperature environment. Mercury can remain superconductive for a long time and become a source of power that never needs to be replenished. Now the remaining difficulty lies in how to maintain a suitable magnetic field around the vehicle so that the mercury can continue to provide thrust. If this problem were solved, then such an ancient interstellar vehicle might have been feasible. He guessed that the inhabitants of Teotihuacan might have solved this problem on their own a long time ago. This speculation is not entirely out of nowhere. Aztec legend has it that their ancestors came from space, landed near Teotihuacan, and began the development of the civilization. Now at the La Venta archaeological site, there's a sculpture showing an astronaut piloting a snake-like craft. Of course, it will take time to uncover the whole truth of Teotihuacan. The excavated part is only less than 10% of the total area. Archaeologists continue to dig hard under the pyramids of Teotihuacan, and perhaps the key to unlocking the secrets of this ancient astronaut is hidden inside one of the pyramids. Well, that's all for today's story. If you have any insightful thoughts or anything you'd like to share, please do so below, and I'll see you next time.